Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Channel Your Light. Own your intuitive. There is somebody on here where the dang universe wants you to win so badly. And uh, this is a message that's coming through for one of the beautiful viewers on this channel. Everything, hindrances, hindrances, obstacles, because you got to have faith, the faith. You need to stop putting your faith in the 3D world and start putting your faith in the 5D world. You need to stop putting your faith in other people and you need to start putting your faith in you. The divine wants you to win so stinking bad. And I just want to roll with these messages because this is a message for somebody who's, I'm hearing down in the dumps or um, unable to recognize what the divine is gifting you because of that limitation or perception. So it's almost like, are you going to commit? Are you going to commit to what was? Are you going to commit to the wounds? Are you going to commit to all the betrayals and all the disappointments? Because if you commit to that, that's what you're going to keep doing. But the divine's like, that's not why we're here. We're asking you to commit to you. We're asking you to commit to the divine. Stop putting your faith in people around you and all the experiences around you from the past and start putting your faith in you. Ooh, to the sea, baby. That's the first card out. I, I hope you can see that really clearly. I love this. This is somebody who's just been shattered by their experiences. You are going to get to a point where I saw you you are going to come to a point very soon and see very clearly light bulb moment. Holy crap. All of those things and all of those disappointments were setting me up to win. And you won't see this in the moment. Like, look at the girl in the card here. I don't know if you can see that. She's got her head down. She's lonely. She's lonely, right? She's on the sea. She feels like she's floating in, in between worlds. I'm hearing it's like a vast ocean. And you're the only person there. That's the feeling of it. Know that all of these experiences are third dimensional experiences. You have a choice. You can perceive them as everything's going bad in the world and everything in my world is bad. And God is uh, deluding me, disappointing me, leaving me behind. You can view that, but look at the face in the sky. The divine is like, oh no, when the third dimensional fails you, the divine never does. And in this shift in this change in this perception <clears throat> look up child look up child ooh, 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 yeah. look up look up how you perceive problems is how you're going to perceive the solution how you perceive god what you believe god to be your view of god is your view of you how you perceive the crappy things that have happened in your life is how you are going to perceive your life, what you are capable of, where you are going. Listen, somebody on here, you asked for all these beautiful, magical, wonderful things. And it's like set up. You were set up to receive all those beautiful, magical, wonderful things, but you had to go through a process to convert, to become, to embody that thing you wanted to embody. So if you saw yourself on a stage, I'm seeing somebody, you see yourself on a stage um, serving lots of people, or there's just something about a stage being on the stage. The divine is watching you ask for to be on a stage. You said, I'm here for a big purpose. People who are here for big purposes, go through big experiences only to come around the corner and come around the bend and suddenly see, oh my gosh, all those shitty things that happened. All those times I was alone. You are not alone. You were never alone. It was preparing you to not be alone. This is kind of coming out like multiple messages for multiple people at once. This is a message for a high priestess. Dang, and a powerful, blessed high priestess. This conjunction of Uranus, Jupiter, full moon. What's the full moon in? Scorpio. Woo, deep transformation. After the rain, this is the rose oracle for somebody on here. After the rain, silver lining, relief, hope, mercy it's over it's over acceptance that it is over acceptance that that phase of your life is over and you can shift into a new one if you commit to the rain i want to say if you commit to putting all of your energy and focus into the thought forms it's like a loop pattern they're showing me it's like going round and round and round 
whatever you have a hindrance of right now, whatever you are feeling like is a giant obstacle, it's going to be amplified and it's going to be on repeat because it's the thing that's confining you. It's the thing that's limiting you. And right now there are massive subsets of souls, like collective soul groups who are moving through a shift right now. And yet individually, there are individuals moving through a shift right now. There are look to the signs, 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 everywhere signs. For some of you, you're going to notice that there are collective soul groups or a theme in different areas, whether it's with channels, with mediums, um, different areas, it doesn't matter what it is, but you're going to notice there's collective soul groups who are going through purgings of old world woundings right now. And we're purging that because it's an old world wounding. And if you embody the old world wounding or hang on to it, refuse to let it go in denial, somebody's in denial about something that's the somebody's in denial about something they need to do a place that they need to be what they need to let go of or an old world wounding. If you're the creator of your own world, leg up from spirit baby this just flipped out leg up from spirit polar bears Ooh, look up child whatever the hindrance is you're facing or this enormous confinement block hurt old world wounding disappointment feeling like everything has failed you look up child you're being shown the wound you need to let go of. You need to let go of being unsupported. That's an old world wound of third dimensional consciousness from the past. If you are facing that, it is because you are working through that because the divine wants you to win. The universe wants you to win. If you feel like no one in this 3D earth plane has wanted you to win, know that the universe wants you to win and therefore your commitment to all the people that don't want you to win or your commitment to the divine that always has been setting you up to win is your choice it's your choice and everything up until this point is going to show you clearly Mm, here and now another card be here and be now stop worrying about the past stop worrying about the future i'm being reminded of um a group call from a while ago about the fig. And it's funny because I have the fig here with me. The fig tree, some people call the Stoyana, the Bodhi tree is the fig tree, I believe. I had to look that up after that came through in the Hyoka channel. That's so funny because I didn't know what that was, the Bodhi tree. So uh, I'm before that channel in the Hyoka, a couple of weeks before that, we had a group call session. This is extremely important, the, apparently, by the divine for somebody to understand it from this context or metaphor. This is for a high priestess who feels utterly disempowered because of your experiences. But you're the damn high priestess. So what are you going to do with those experiences? You're an alchemist. This is a message for an alchemist, knowing that your alchemy is prized. It is like, woo! the universe is like, do you know we gave you all those experiences, all that aloneness, all that darkness, all that loss, all that betrayal, so that you could see that you were the darn high priestess, so that you could know that you were going to alchemize all of it, because you set out to embody this in this lifetime. You set out to embody this. You're never going to know that you're this unless you've been through hell and back, right? And this is also for high priestess or a high priest. I have the eagle soaring in now or an eagle energy, somebody that embodies the eagle energy in both worlds. Fly high, dear hearts, whoever that message is for. Fly high. Stop limiting yourself. Stop committing to the confinement of you. And that's Uranus speaking. Woo! Uranus is like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen, but oh, lose control. I lose control. Who's that? Teddy Swims. I love that man. I love that man. I lose control. The Unfinished Symphony. That's the next card out at the bottom of the deck. I'm going to put it on this side so you guys can see it clearly. Notice it is the symphony of life, the harmony of life, the note that you play in the music of life or the song. Right now, this is deep scorpionic transformation energy. And this means that you are facing some of the unfinished symphonies in your life, the places where you have denied yourself, the places where you are committing to a lie or an illusion that you no longer need to attach 
attached to or hold on to. This is unfinished business coming up. So whatever obstacle you're facing, whatever hindrance, whatever you feel like up, down, all around, all of these things, it's purging time for a, for a big collective soul group right now. And we're purging old world wounding. So this is both internally old world is in the old earth or the old version of you or the past experiences of you in this lifetime, but it's doubled. I want to say double whammy because this is also the purging of an entire collective of old world wounding from old world beliefs of the separation of masculine and feminine. So for example, divine feminines or feminines on the earth plane who have distorted wounded energy because of that separation, that degree of separation, that extreme imbalance between masculine and feminine. What did they do? They separated us on the external, which separated us internally from our own divine masculine and divine feminine energy. People are not the problem, but if we have systems that separate us, segregate us and imbalance us and deny and dismiss one of God's creations, it creates a problem, right? If we can see what the problem clearly is, we can come back into the self and realize that all these problems, we only have problems because they are begging to be solved. What about us? That's the song I'm hearing. What about all the times? Oh, that's a pink song. We're all problems waiting to be solved. But if you can only view yourself as a problem, then that's the problem that's waiting to be solved. For you to view yourself as a solution, for you to view yourself as worthy, for you to view yourself as held and supported by the divine here and now, releasing this to step into this, which makes you this. And it's high priest too. Like, obviously this is a message for a divine feminine, but I'm hearing there's a divine masculine on here that this is a message for you. Allow all the rose petals. Somebody thought a rose, um, I'm hearing every rose has its thorn. Somebody thinks a single rose is where it's at, but the single rose has multiple petals. And how did the rose get to bloom? By growing, by shielding itself with all its thorns. There is a beautiful white lotus rose in bloom at this time, and all the thorns have been sheared off. And what are the thorns? It's the old world wounding. Allow them to be dissipated. Allow them to fall off. Allow the rose petals to unfold and unfurl. I'm getting an Aeneas Nin quote. There came a time. Oh, this is in one of the journals. Oh, this is in one of the journals that uh, I created and I actually I actually sell on Amazon. I'll link that below if you wish to go look at it. The Bloom Journal and it is a lotus on the front. I actually put quotes in here. It's a huge journal, 222 pages, just for synchronicity, my friends. And uh, here it is right here. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took for you to blossom. That's the quotes that is on one of the journal pages here. If you wish to um, awaken a line, embody, embrace your bloom, journal, write your soul onto the page, allow your flowers and your petals to begin to unfurl and bloom. Well, the link for that's in the description box below. If you wanna order one of those journals, please feel free to do that. And the reason that I'm sharing that piece, I'm being told somebody on here, it's like, we're waiting for you to bloom, but you will not bloom unless you have released the things that are confining you. These are thought patterns. These are old world woundings. These are ideas and beliefs that you're not what you are. If your mind says, I'm not this, but your heart is like, I know I am this, there's an incongruency, if that makes any sense. And right now in this purging, let it all come out, see it clearly, do not deny what it is. You're being faced with it amplified in order for you to see it clearly so that you can release it. Can I get Avalon? I'm being told to go to the Avalon. It's so funny. One of the channels that I did before this had the Knights of the Round Table show up and they were showing me the round table and talking about how all the Knights at the table it's not about being like-minded. It's about being like-focus. If we're like-minded and we say we want to be around like-minded people, that's important. We do need to be around people who understand us, who see us, who perceive us accurately, who are 
like-minded. We need that. That's part of the tribe. That's part of the community. But so too, do we need to be like focus and encourage uh, unity of different minded things? Take a risk. Take a risk. We need to be like focus, focus for the highest good, focus for the evolution. This is for the bridge. Focus on creating this new earth aspect, new earth foundations, new earth platforms, new earth teaching, joy, happiness, belief in the self, belief in the divine, because the universe thing well wants you to win. But you got to take a risk. You got to put this to bed and you have to take a risk. Spirit's helping you to take that risk right now. The energy's in alignment with that because you are loved. You are blessed. You have to take the risk to be you. And when you do this, you're going to look back shortly before the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. And you're going to be like, man, I wish I took that risk sooner because that wasn't a risk. It was, oh, funny. That's part of the quote that was just in the Bloom Journal. It is more of a risk for you to stay in this old world energy and hold on to this old world wounding. Old world wounding is being illuminated both on the collective field and the public eye. These are old world wounds that have plagued, plagued the collective consciousness on this earth plane. This was meant to be heaven on earth. It was not meant to be hell on earth. And for a lot of people, it's how on earth. What is that showing us? What's that obstacle? Here's how we create heaven. Here's what we need to do. Here's the platforms we need to set up. Here's the teachings we need to embody. And what's that? Oh, right. We need to bring down the different star seed families. We need to bring down uh, angelical beings. We need to unite all 12 houses. There's your aura. Ah. Oh, Knights of the round table. I'm being shown again in the Holy Grail, the night. Knights of the round table. The knights that sit at the table, they are not like-minded. They are like-focused for the greater good of humanity, for the greater good of spirituality and balance and peace and harmony. But they are not like-minded. They are like-focused. One person that sits at the table is ridiculously creative, drawing in all these higher knowledge and wisdom. The next person sitting at the table behind, beside them is very logical, very structured, sits at the table, takes these higher nuances and says, okay, here's how we're gonna structure them out. The next person at the table is the experiential person who's walked in this world and that world and says, okay, we need this and we need that. <clears throat> Funny. Somebody's struggling with their throat chakra big time. I'm hearing your throat is divine expression, which is divine power. When you allow others to confine you and old world wounding to put a dark chokehold on your throat chakra to stymie what it is you are doing. If you allow that, and this is the key, allow, you are empowered to make the choice of whether or not you will allow that at this point in time. Spirit's giving you a leg up to recognize you have a choice to choose more than, to choose different, to recognize, oh, that was showing me I just need to stand in my power. That was pushing me to speak my truth. That was pushing me to embody my I am presence and step into fifth dimensional consciousness. This is the leg up from spirit. Spirit, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That's what spirit's saying. Your spirit embodied. The idea that you're putting all your faith in the third dimensional consciousness and old world wounding and no longer taking the risk, which is more of a risk to say in the old world wounding and hang on to all the hurt and all the unsupportedness. That's more of a risk than you becoming you, you being you in everything that you are in every fiber of your being. And for some of you, you're going to be like, oh, what if it's messy? What if it's this? I can't say this. I can't say that. But you can. You're being shown the confinement, the limitations, the jail that you have placed yourself in. You're being shown that. Go back to the fig tree story now, says Ava. Okay. The fig tree story, I am to trust the deep weavings of this because they all weave together. So on this group call with the fig tree here, <laughs> funny how spirit took me here and then back to the fig tree. So some people may feel like this is scattered, but in actuality, the dynamics of this is interwoven creating one solid story so that you get all the nuances all the metaphors and all the understandings this has to do with the risk card before i did the hyoka channel a couple weeks before that 
uh, one of the people in the group session was talking about how they have this beautiful fig tree in their house and it grows always grows to the ceiling and they keep chopping it down and chopping it down and chopping it down. This person also happens to be afraid of being big because of the risk is that is perceived if she is all of who she is as a backlash from other people. But the risk is, here's her house of self. Every time her fig tree, her Bodhi tree hits there, she chops it down, unwilling to take the risk to grow beyond the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We gonna let it burn. Remove the roofs. The sky is the limit. Why, why cut your tree down? So many people do this. It's like it's the risk is too big because of the backlash from others. No, the risk is too big because you're allowing that to confine you. And you came here to be you. You came here to blast through that. That's why you're being presented with those things. Uranus, that is Uranus in spades. Finding the places we've confined ourselves, giving away our power. What is limiting our abundance and our growth and our expansion? That's Jupiter. What's been happening since the 17th of April, which was the start of a 12 year cycle. Jupiter is that expansive planetary system. Bow and arrow, follow your arrow wherever it points follow your arrow so if jupiter is saying hey we're here for expansion and now's the time to do that and uranus says hold on i'm going to create some friction this is what this is and jupiter and uranus were both squared transiting with the moon on the 17th which created this friction of oh my gosh i'm looking to expand and grow and i'm not really growing and what am i doing and i feel kind of lost and why is this not working out and Uranus squared it as well to show you that friction saying, hey, this is where we are need to break out of the confines. I'm going to show you where you're confining yourself in this expansion of abundance and growth and uh, blossoming. That's what that's doing. That's what that's showing us. And those two have been transiting a few times, those two planets over the last five days leading up to this full moon so that you could illuminate clearly what you have been allowing to confine you over a belief of a negative thing that will happen, which means you'll project that into your future because that's your current embodiment. Whatever you embody, mind, body, and spirit at this time, that is what you will create. So you have a choice now. It is riskier for all of us in the collective at this point in time to keep diving down into that confining ourselves. That's a bigger risk than it is to simply be who you are, throwing off the chains, releasing the confines of the self. It's a bigger risk to not do that right now. We're stepping into a shift. You, you have the power to choose. Spirit's gifting you this. You were always blessed. You were always going to overcome this. That's why you're facing it at this time. The stag. Woo! I got so much energy running through me right now that I'm shaking. The stag, pride and leadership, also happens to be the card number 17. You cannot make this shit up. What is confining you? Let's go to the second story. The next lady in the group says of this fig tree, the next lady in the group says, Oh my gosh, my mom had a fig tree in her house. And instead of cutting it down, it grew up to the ceiling. It grew sideways along the ceiling and down the other side of the room. She confined it to the point that it just kept growing into the room, looping into the pattern. And it just so happened that this individual, that was her mother. She did not escape the confinement. She did not overcome the things she needed to overcome. She stayed in those loop patterns. So the fig grew into the room and grew and grew and grew. She did not allow it to grow and expand outside of herself. This is her house of self. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Hey, 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 hey. What if? This comes up a lot in private sessions and group sessions, and it's been coming up for weeks now. Walk this way. Walk this way, darling. What if something knocked on the door? Your leg up from spirit 
your dreams and wishes come true. They knock on your door and all of a sudden you're in your house of self and you're like, oh my gosh, I have all this fear because I've asked for this thing, but this is showing up. And what if it's a repeat of the past and I have to become somebody else? That's freedom knocking at your door. Every time you feel fear, something bad's gonna happen. It's gonna be the same as it was before. I asked for this manifestation or I asked to become or embody this. You're going to face fear. And what's knocking on your door is your freedom. What if you knew that every time something showed up at your door, they were knocking to show you the way to your freedom? Same with blockages. If you have a block in your throat chakra, it's, I can't speak my truth. Well, what's the thing we need to do? We need to face it head on. How do you get rid of that block? You do the thing that's blocking it. So the block in essence is not a block. It's showing you where there's a stagnancy of energy where you get to take back your power. And yes, you are going to be faced with fear. And yes, you are going to be faced with old world wounding because all those things get dismantled in the process and broken down. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. That's your freedom knocking at your door. Walk this way. That's your freedom knocking at the door. It is more of a risk to stay tightly bound in the house of self and old world wounding and old paradigms than it is to bloom, to blossom, to become who you were truly meant to be. There's the high priestess. A lot of the old world wounding has, does have to do with masculine and feminine. It has to do with sacred energy. It has to do with significant imbalances. Many of you who are tuned to Christ consciousness, this is going to be coming up in your field like nobody's business. Oh, 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 oh. This is the last card, the dog. I have so many things coming in with this. The dog is loyalty, sincerity, and unconditional love. The word dog, if you spell it backwards, spells God. Loyalty to you, sincerity, and unconditional love for you. How you perceive God is how you perceive yourself. If you feel like God has forsaken you, you are forsaking yourself. If you feel that the universe is not working in your favor, you are not working in your favor. If you feel like the entire world is against you, you are against you. Because the universe fucking wants you to win so bad. This is why I've been told to sit down and channel this message for somebody. We want you to win. You need to want you to win. You need to know that you can win. You need to know that the only thing you have to do is choose you. It is a risk to stay where you are right now. And that risk leads to old, more old world. If you call, I will answer. I love this stag card. The dog card really is true. Animals show us so much about ourselves. They are teaching us about ourselves. And so many people view animals as a hierarchy, like they are a lower than or less than or don't have a consciousness or don't understand. Dude, they're the ones waiting for us to wake up and trying to show us this. Oh, and I love animals. Love. I'm sure all you dog lovers out there would agree. They are divine beings in and of ourselves. Oh my gosh. And I'm being reminded of, this is so interesting. Keanu Reeves went on a show with Kelly Clarkson. And this was a clip from something. This was a long time ago. And she had a pen full of puppies on the stage. And... Keanu Reeves walked into the room and all those puppies went right to him. And when I watched it, I remember thinking to myself, oh, they know his frequency. They know who he is. They know where he's at because energy does not lie, my friends. Energy does not lie. Frequency does not lie. So hold your frequencies. Take the risk to be in your full empowerment because that's the dang thing we've been asking you to do the whole time and what you've been working towards the whole time. So don't shame yourself if you haven't stepped into this. You've been preparing for this. And for some of you, your mission is huge. Yes, your mission is huge, but you're huge. Your energy is huge. Your empowerment of your full I am presence is freaking huge. Make way, make way. Uh, that's from Moana, a reference for somebody on here. Make way for this huge energy of your I am presence. It requires you to take a risk. 
but the bigger risk is to not do it. And I feel like not do it. I'm not telling you to make rash decisions. It's the risk of not choosing you. It's the risk of choosing old world wounding. It's the risk of staying in the pattern. Why would you take that risk? That's five times, 10 times, a million times more confining than choosing to take the risk of being you and standing in your power. Because God, the divine, has your back. And that's the dog card, which apparently I put back into here. Oh, the fire fairy. And that's why I put it back in there. So I pick another card. Last card, last card. The fire fairy is about creative action and optimism. See that beautiful fire fairy? Fire is a necessary element. It's a necessary element that we must embody. It's life force energy. It's powerful. It is needed. So if your fire has been consistently put out, consider yourself put on notice. Your fire has been reignited. Your optimism is being reignited right here, right now, here and now. There you go. Oh, look at the here and now card, friends. Notice it says past and future. I hope you can see that. Notice there's a door, the egg in the middle, in the presence. Past is in the past, future is in the future. Stop worrying about those two things. Do not let those old world wounds from the past and the fear of the future, your fear of the future is because of your old world, old world wounding of the past. Side note, see how if you let the old world wounding go, the future no longer holds all of that fear, all of that, I can't open the door. And you do that here and now in the present moment. Dang, spirit is good. I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that when I pulled that card. Spirit is so good. We want you to win. The entire universe wants you to win. Please let yourself win. So get out of your own way. Let yourself win. Do the things you need to do. When, when freedom knocks at your door, please answer it. And if you are being faced with this giant goblin, this inner goblin of old world wounding in the past and not being supported, I want you to embrace the goblin and say, I love you. You have done your job and open the door to your freedom. Open the door to choosing you. Because guess what? The divine always was chosen you, always wa watching over you, always supporting you. I lean into that. Friends, and when you do, just know that there will be some rain, some pain, some purging, some crying, some, uh, there's going to be all that stuff. And it's wonderful. I am celebrating the purging of all the old world wounding, casting it out, allowing it to be released and expressed from the body. I have the golden Buddha in the second door of expression, which is the second dimension or the second perspective of expression expressing those things out from your experiences of the old world wounding allows the buddha to arise within allows the christ to be risen within allows you to recognize risk feeling it risk releasing it don't hold on to it the golden buddha within when you express it Ugh. We just, I feel like we married a bunch of different things there. Dimensions, Buddha, Christ. I'm hearing Nirvana. The Nirvana state is the total empowerment of the self. No longer allowing other things and old world wounding to confine you. It's releasing the prisons and the chains of self-imposed limitations. Hanging on to all of those old wounds. Uh, they should, oh, for somebody on here, you're hanging on to them because you feel like justice has to be served. But my dear, justice is served when you fly high and release the wounds and you step into, that is the justice. You taking back your power. It's not about anybody else outside of you. It's not about other people. Because the second you do this, that all gets flatlined. That's what I'm hearing. That all gets flatlined when you rise up, rise up. Friends, let me know who needed to hear this in the comments here. I'm curious to know the serpent. 
Ooh, the white serpents, knowledge and healing, 13th house of unity. Dang, that's what's coming out. Side note, I also the other day was told to purchase yellow flowers, <laughs> which is solar plexus chakra and golden ray frequency. And I was told to put them in my white snake vase, which is the white snake of healing, transcending and calling in divine wisdom. And what's golden yellow? It's divine wisdom. It's golden ray frequency. It's Christ consciousness. It's that shedding of the old world skins, the old world woundings of that serpent um, poisonous energy. It's shedding the poison from within you so that you can embody that white ray frequency within you. <laughs> See all the beautiful synchronicities of this. You can't make this shit up. You can't. It, it's so wonderful and beautiful. That's synergy. That's the signs all pointing you in the same direction. Walk this way. Who sings that? That's like a rock and roll song. I want to say, I love rock and roll. That also breaks down 23 into a five, which is a number of change. Oh, it's so good. I just get excited about this. So let me know in the comments, are you guys experiencing all these up and downs? Look at all of it as golden opportunity. I just keep seeing this card, golden opportunity. It's the golden palace. These are your golden tickets. That shitty thing that happened to you, that thing you're facing right now that feels like this enormous goblin is your golden ticket to overcome it. Viewing the problem, viewing the obstacle, viewing the hindrance from the perception of, oh my gosh, it's going to take me down or I can't face this. You're being shown that you need to change your perspective of it too. Oh my gosh, this is showing me the where I need to walk. This is showing me to face this head on. This is showing me I can release the old world wounding. This is showing me I truly can take the risk to embrace myself because that is not the risk. You perceive it to be a risk because of old world wounding. The risk is you saying Anais Nin. I don't even know Anais Nin. I don't even know that I'm saying that right. I apologize. The risk is staying tightly woven in the old world wounding and staying this big because the Bodhi tree does not not open the door, the fig tree, notice the metaphors of that, not opening the door, not being willing to grow, not being willing to rise, not being willing to do those things because of fears of old world wounding, because of this energy. That's what is showing you. Allow yourself to bloom, expand and grow. You will be so grateful you took that risk. If anybody's wondering what decks I was pulling from, it's the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Sorry, that's not the Wisdom of the Oracle. This one is from the Wisdom of the Oracle, but this is also the um, Wisdom of Avalon. They're both her decks. So Wisdom of Avalon and Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. And of course, if you wish to connect with me for courses or individual private sessions, you can find the link to my website in the video description box below. And I'll catch you all in the next video.